Brilliant from Kennedy. Couldn't resist the shot. That's gone in off the defender. And determined, you lose your little player. And it's in. It's a goal from Gilmer. Jimmy Gilmer has scored for Falkirk. Finnegan's cross. Stephen Thompson. Falkirk have the lead after a quarter of an hour. Mackenzie slips. It goes straight to McGuffey. McGuffey shoots from his own half. And that is incredible. He's taking them all on here. Catch him if you can. You can't. That is amazing. That is phenomenal. A touch of individual inspiration from Kevin McAllister. This is Falkirk Daft. Hello and welcome to Falkirk Daft and uh, yet again it's a bit of a special podcast this week. Um, We've done a few of these so far and really looking forward to this one. Um, It's Falkirk Daft meets Sam McGivern, a man who played 153 games and got 37 goals for the club. And another, you know, Ross has got his nickname after the Ginger God of Pod. We've got the Ginger God himself on right now. How you doing, Sam? All good, John. Yep, yeah, absolutely delighted to have been first of all asked on and uh, get the opportunity to speak to you two dafties for a wee while. That'll be brilliant. Brilliant. You've brilliant. got that right. We missed you at the Fortress Brockville night, um, so we thought let's catch up with you now. Get the stories from you because I'm sure you've got a few to tell. Now there, there, there could there could be a few to tell. There, there'll probably be some that I'm not going to answer to as well, right enough. But you can <laughs> you can carry on anyway. <laughs> brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Sam, honestly, I know John's already said it, but uh, and I've I've said this to you probably about a thousand times in person. And massive. when he's drunk and texting you at night, Sam. Uh, exactly. <laughs> massive, okay. massive, massive, massive hero of mine and a proper fan girl in here as well. So this is good. <laughs> um, Sam, obviously, before we start talking about Brockville though, and everything that went on there, um, well, obviously, Fogart, as we record just now, this is a Sunday, the day after the Aki's game. Um Falkirk's having an absolute belter of a season now. What are you mm-hmm. made of this season so far? Um, I'm, I'm I'm thrilled, and I think we're, we're nearly there. Um, I know we, we shouldn't uh, kind of be a wee bit early with, with expectations and things like that, but um, I, I think after yesterday, we're pretty much there. Um, 3-0 up at half-time yesterday, and I know that they, they got back into the game. I know there's a wee bit of controversy over, you know, maybe the first goal. I'm not so sure about it. To be fair, you know, I, when you when you see the highlights of the game and you, and you see somebody definitely did step up, yeah. um, it looked such an obvious offside, Ross. And but I'm not I'm not really sure if it was, but it put us in the back foot a wee bit. Obviously, when they got the second one as well, um, it's kind of squeaky bum time. Yeah. But to be fair, we should have had the game finished at half time again, you know. But. I think if this had been a game in the last four or five years, we'd have drawn or lost that. Mm. Um, the mentality is different. We could have scored a few more goals yesterday, even when they did get back into the game. Um, so, false scoreline for me. Um, I think we thoroughly deserved it. I'm sure that everybody was getting a wee bit anxious in the stadium. Um, but, you know, I, I was kind of all right with that yesterday. Yeah. Um, I, I was confident we were going to be okay. And, and it's probably to do with... You know, John McGlynn and, and Paul Smith's, um, I think that they, they've definitely got the players. Their, their attitude's different. You know, let, let's face it, you know, they're, they're seeing games out when, when before, I think, as I said earlier, we, we could have lost or, or, or drawn that one. Absolutely. And I think you're right. I think there is a different vibe. Uh, even even though there was a little bit of nervousness when it went to 3-2, as you said, there was also that quiet confidence in the, and not a like, quiet confidence, but a loud confidence in the crowd and in the, in the feeling in the stadium yeah. that, do you know what, we're going to hang on to this or we're going to extend the lead. We didn't, but we could well have, as you said, we could have sco- easily scored five or six yeah. goals today across the we, piece. We had two or three great opportunities at, at 3-2, you know, to really put it to bed. Um, to be fair, I, I think even if they'd got it to 3 each, I, I think I'd, it would have been hellish, but I, I think we could still have I think we would still have been okay. Um, yeah. I think that the players are certainly learning. Um, it makes a hell of a difference as well that you know we've got the continuity. Of what we all feel is is the right start eleven, mm. um, and I, I think that we would have seen it out okay even if they'd got another one back. But as I said, you know we had so many chances just to, to put it to bed yesterday. 
and three and a half at half time, you know, you think it's all by the way, but you know, we've, we've all been there. Um, we've all played in these games, and and you know, when another team starts coming back at you, Hamilton, the, 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 they're decent, you know, and they're strong. Um, and I know there's been a wee bit of moaning about them kicking us all over the park yesterday, but you know what? Needs must. Yeah. If I was manager of Hamilton Ackies, I would have had their players telling them to do whatever they had to do to get back into the game as well. Totally. Um, and you have to, you just have to deal with it. You know, you do have to deal with it. They, they were a wee bit ruthless at times, but hey, I'm all right with that. That's, that's what I would have said to the players to get back into the game as well. Yeah. I mean, it's great that you obviously still follow the club, Sammy. I mean, you were at the club for, for seven years. You you were brought up yeah. in Kilwinning. When you were born in Kilwinning, who did you follow as a kid? Um, uh, My PE teacher played with Kelly. Right. So that was uh, my grounding was um, I wanted to I wanted to play with Kelly, um, and I was um, my, my my grounding was uh, first of all Salkut Star through through my, my, my local town in Salkut, um, and I was we were managed by Stevie Clark's dad, um, and believe it or not, Stevie Clark's dad's funeral tomorrow, which is hellish. Uh, I'll be going to that. Um, so he was my first manager in, in boys football. So me and Stevie. Left Salkut Star and went to Springside together uh, up near Kilmarnock. And we travelled for two years together, playing with them. And then we went, well, well different ways. I went to Kilmarnock, he went to St. Murn. Um, and that was my grounding down, down in this area, John. Um, we we, we Salkut Star and then um, we, went to, we went to Springside and then Kilmarnock Boys Club uh, picked me up and Stevie went to St. Murn. Um, so yeah, that, that was your grounding down here. You know, you, you kind of followed where if you were going to want to improve, you had to go elsewhere. And it was mm. a bus three times a week for me and Stevie, fifty minutes or something during the week traveling to Springside to play. Aye. I Great. mean, you, me- you mentioned Stevie Clark there, eh, Sammy, but I mean, you obviously had when you were a youth, you you won the European Youth Tournament, um, and you were playing alongside Mick Stay and Nevin, Eric Black, Gary Mackay, all these greats. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was a lot of clubs kind of sniffing about you, yeah, but you. Um, mm-hmm. You you end up um, coming to Falkirk. I ended up at Falkirk. <laughs> <laughs> you were but you were part time and you fancied a crack at full time football. Is that right? Is that how yeah, you that, was? T- to be fair, five and a half years of um, difficult times for me at, at Kilmarnock. Um, I wanted to go full time, John, and that was at a time when the Bosman rule and wasn't he, wasn't he with us. Um, and if the club offered you the same terms um, or no less terms than what you were on, you had to sign. Right. You know, and, and employment law now that's never never be allowed to happen. And for five and a half years I was in Kilmarnock, I was trying to get away. And and I, I don't mean to be horrible about that, but I wanted to play full time football. Yeah. And there and it wasn't until I went to Falkirk that I learned about the amount of teams that had been in for me prior. Um and that's no no a nice feeling. But, I know, you know I mean there was talk about Nottingham Forest, Southampton, all these teams that we were looking yeah. at. Yeah. Well, I was down at Forest um when I was at school. Um, twice um, on trial and thoroughly enjoyed it. Played with the third team when I was 15 years old. Um, but, you know, uh, the, the, the opportunity came along to sign with Kilmarnock and they gave me a job in the, the ground staff and all that. So it was kind of leaving school and, you know, wh- where is my future? What am I going to do? I did want to play football. And then I thought, you know, if I go to Kilmarnock, then I get the chance of moving on or whatever. But Five and a half year was, was tough. Um, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy my time at, at Rugby Park, but it was five and a half year that I wanted to move on to to, to better things. And and fortunately for me, at the end up it was Falkirk, and really? I wouldn't change that for the world. And it was Billy Lamont that brought you in, wasn't it? Billy Lamont brought me in, and uh, we were in the Premier League at the time. And uh, my first game was was against Celtic at Parkhead, uh, having signed in the Friday mo- uh, the Saturday morning. Wow! Um, it, and it was it was mad. So went to Billy's bit for uh, my, my lunch with him and his wife before I get to into Parkhead for, for my first game. Yep, brilliant. How, how did the how did the move come about? Did you hear? Did obviously because I, I don't know how it would have been back in back in the day. Sammy was that phone calls between the managers or was on, it the, the, on, on a Friday night, Ross? Right, before, on the Saturday, and it was Billy that phoned me because uh, Eddie Morrison was a Kilmarnock manager. And Eddie, Eddie was really good to me. To be fair, as was Jim Clooney prior to that. Mm. Um, Eddie phoned me uh, sorry uh, Billy phoned me on Friday night alright son I'm like ah, aye, who's this Billy Lamont here Falkett manager I said oh, alright he says um, 
I'm going to be signing you tomorrow morning. Can you get to Rugby Park and get your boots? That's amazing. I thought, um, well, I didn't drive at the time. And um, I thought, well, so I made a phone call to the club and was able to get my boots and we went to the SFA offices to do the signing and it was meant to be myself um, and I think it was 35 grand, I think it was. And Robert Stewart, Rob Stewart was meant to go for... Falkirk to Kilmarnock as well as part of the deal. So uh-huh. Billy Lamont being um, as crafty as, as Billy Lamont is, got my deal all, all done and sorted. Um, and Eddie Morrison was probably a wee bit less experienced in getting deals done probably at that time. And so Rab Stewart <laughs> decided to knock back uh, Kilmar- or, or Falkirk's uh, or Kilmarnock's offer to him. And uh, Eddie Morris said to Billy Lamb, well, that's it, the deal's off. If we're not getting Robert, then we're not doing it. Billy Lamb says to him, Eddie, I think you'll find I've already signed him, so you're a bit too late. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, deal, the deal was done. I was going to Falkirk and Rab, didn't he go? Kelly, he uh, never he, went? Sorry, oh, I went wow. to Falkirk. He didn't go to come out oh, at really? all. And, I mean, and the deal was done. At, at the, the, the price agreed. There was, a, there, was, um, there, I, must, there must have been a bit of pressure on you because obviously you came in as a, a, di- a replacement for Alan Irvin. Yep. Sammy, who'd moved down to Liverpool and yeah, was yeah. obviously a, a great at Falkirk. So did yeah. you immediately feel that there was pressure on you when you arrived at the club? Um, pro- probably not. Um, I knew Alan had, had done well. Um, I knew where he'd went, things like that. But you, you can't you can't even begin to start thinking about things like that. You know, you, you're, you're thrown into the game at, at Parkhead and you know all you're going to have to be doing is chasing people. Mm. You know, you're going to be chasing shadows at, at Parkhead. Uh, we could beat 4-2 that day. And then my first game at Brockville was uh, against the United. And we beat them 2-1 and we were excellent that day. Um, and I was lucky to score my first goal. That was my, my first Falkirk goal at home in the Premier League against the United. Um, I'm sure it's Peter Harrison scored a crack free kick to put us up 2-1. Yeah. Um, and I pretty much, I'm not saying I was off and running because it took a wee while before I, I was probably became a wee bit more a better goal scorer after that. Mm. But, you know, it was a good start for me. Um, and probably the fans took to me straight away, which was um, which was brilliant. Sammy, obviously, you, you would have, you, as you mentioned, your first game at Parkhead, your your first day in a, as a Falkirk player was away mm-hmm. from home. You would have mm-hmm. then came to Brockville ahead of the Dundee United game. What, what yep. was your first impressions of Brockville? Um, I enjoyed playing there all the time, Ross. To be perfectly honest, um, I loved the, the, the fact. I mean, you can imagine how vast Rugby Park felt yeah. compared to Brockville. Mm. You know, but one of the biggest pitches in Scotland, um, big areas, uh, terraces and things like that. And I know yeah. how big they are because I used to paint all the fences there. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> it was amazing. You know, I, I, I always felt good playing at Brockville mm. uh, for Kelly, um, and it was a, it was a no brainer. But it was full time, you know, it was what I wanted anyway. And would it have been, would, would I've said yes to anyone that was full time? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I was desperate to go full time, but would I have said yes to somebody else? I, I can't answer that. It was yeah. Falkirk that came in, and I'm glad it was. Um, and yeah, I, I was I was really looking forward to playing on that kind of tight kind of park and mm-hmm. with, with the crowd on top of you. Um, so I was always, I was always kind of felt welcome going there with, with Kilmarnock, you know, with, with the yeah. Falkirk fans, and I don't, I don't, I don't know why. Um, they they took took to me before I even signed for them. Maybe hind- hindsight, they knew Sam. Hindsight. Oh, they must have done. They must have knew yeah. I was going to come. Man. That must have been it. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, I, I, you know that that some of them do still bring up. I don't know if you you will remember the day that we that we played there with Kelly, and it was the bomb scare. Um, mm-hmm. And all the all the fans had to vacate the the stands and, and come onto the park. Oh, oh no. wow! I didn't know that. I didn't I know that. You you don't need to jump. I'm I'm disappointed. You two guys know that. <laughs> so we we um, Kelly won that day one 0 at Brockville and I scored. Um, a, 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 a big Dempsey made a wee bit of mistake at the back. Big Jimmy uh, and I went in and scored by George Watson. Um, right. And I I don't know whether. I'm not saying the Falkirk fans took to me that day, but um, <laughs> that even that day I really enjoyed playing on the pitch and playing with the atmosphere. But no, every 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 member of the the the, the crowd had to go into the pitch with the players. 
because it was an actual real telephone call of a bomb scare. Wow. And I think it, I think it was to be fair that it was the times there was loads of troubles over the water and things like that, and everything ah, was getting right, okay. seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and that's exactly what happened that day. So th- there'll be plenty of Falkirk fans who do remember that. So I'm, that's that is a brilliant. You still are right doing in the history of the club now. You both of you will tell you. Uh, to be to be to be fair, I've seen plenty of bomb scares that brought for myself, you know. <laughs> I'm to be honest with you. Um, I saw so that, John. <laughs> we'll come with that. We'll come back to that question, Sam. You know what we're going to ask you was who was the worst bomb scare you saw? I, well, I, um, I mean, yet before you can, I mean, the first part of your career, you had a few injuries and stuff, Sammy, and you yeah. probably didn't hit the the heights that you wanted to. Yeah. But um, I mean, it all kind of changed. When I mean, I think you've given a lot of credit to Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown when they came yeah. in. They, to be fair, the the kind of um, they, they they through them and one of the directors that they, they got me sent to a chiropractor, um, who was a she was an American lady doing the soul coach and she worked with the the USA Olympic um, team at, at one time, but. Unfortunately, the chiropractors weren't they recognised with the British Medical Association at the time, and I went down to get treatment from her, and it was on on the say so one of the, the, the directors who was, was friends, obviously with, with, with Jim Jeffries, and within weeks she, she she sorted out the problem that I had the whole time I was at Brockville prior to that, and um, it was an ongoing lower back injury, um, that that this that was causing me all sorts of problems doing one side of my body, uh, it was hamstring strains and calf strains and Achilles strains and all that, but it was on the one side. And they sent it to this lady and oh my God, the, the difference was unbelievable. Um that she she recognized what my, my issue was and 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 really I went on to have the, the, the season in my life, in my career, um under Jim Jeffries. But it, it all came about going to see that this this chiropractor down the soul coach. So Sam, you see obviously you mentioned a female Chiropractor from Salt Coast. Mm-hmm. Is this leading yeah. to a Salt a Salt Coast uh, story at all, or is she not I, involved? I, in I, any? Don't, I, I don't. I don't know what you're getting at. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll have a wee chat about that within what fifty minutes that we've got, or whatever it is. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that one yet. <laughs> do, do, do you know what? I, I, I work with Jim Duffy at, um, on Clyde One, Sammy, and I've always yeah, yeah. always wanted to go. So what happened? Eh? Come on, tell us right. a Salt Coast story. Well. Can I can I just say that um, I don't believe that the Salkits issue was the reason that Jim Duffy lost his job at Falkirk. Uh, in my opinion, that was happening anyway. Um, yeah. And it, it, it just it, nothing about it timing wise or of the of the incident that happened. Um, I, in, in my honest opinion, Jim Duffy was losing his job at Falkirk. Regardless of what happened in at Salkos, and and to this day, I've, I've always maintained that I, I would never change that night. <laughs> was it that good? I <laughs> it, it was absolutely that good. We, you know, we good friends that were down, and they were all staying at Baba. And um, I, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. We were just, just ordinary guys out for a night out, and some folk decided to have a wee a wee pack on us, and um, aye, it was. Um, I, I I wouldn't change it for the world, and 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 I know that's maybe not the right thing to say, but I, I, I've always been very very honest, and they were good friends, and we were out for a night out. And as I say, I I I, I can't change it. It's it's happened, um, but and do I regret it? No. Whose choice? I can, I can say it's sixty out. years old. I don't regret it. <laughs> yeah. Whose choice was it for a night out in Salt Coast anyway? <laughs> well, well, I invited them. <laughs> I didn't invite the trouble that ensued. Um, but again, you know, sometimes, you know, as I say, I, I, getting back to Jim Duffy, I, I had a lot of time for him. He came in at 29 years old um, with players who had a wee bit of experience and things like that. And you know what? I, I liked his style. Yeah. I yeah. liked his style of management. Um, I think with some player as well. Oh, absolutely. I hated playing against him as well, um, to be perfectly honest. But um, the, the, the team that he put together, I think we used to win the league. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it was no, probably no quite as good as, well, it wasn't as good as the 1991. So that would have been the 89, or was it uh, a, a 89-90 team? Uh, it, it, 
Jam 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 so it, it we we that was a strong side. That was a good side. Um, you know, and and Manly and and um, Burgess together was outstanding. It yeah. really was. Um, and then you've got Alec Ray coming through. You've got John Gallagher coming through, um, and McWilliams. Um, it was it was a decent decent side. Um, and it was hellish the, the, the day we, the second last game of the season when we played it. I think it was McDermott and we beat them 1-0 um, and we'd been given the wrong score after the game for the Dunfermline game um, and we thought we were we thought we had really really um, with a great chance of winning the league yeah. and it just wasn't to be um, but I had a lot of respect for, for, for Jim Duffy but things were going wrong just before he, he, he lost his job um, on the park Yeah, and so if, if people are in update and Clinton Jim Duffy wants to blame Salkits, they can they can carry on. It's you know it's a long, long time ago, Ross. You know what I mean? So I know. hey, yeah. I, listen, I'm I'm good with whatever MD wants to blame, but I, I won't change that night for, for, for anything. Sammy, you obviously mentioned 1990, uh, 91 there, which me personally, I know I've said this to you before, that mm-hmm. still drunken texts again I, at night as I well. Know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> sweet, sweet nothings over text. That highlight in my probably still uh, of my Falkirk supporting time is is that for you the sort of the, the pinnacle that you had at Falkirk? Do you think? Absolutely, Ross. Um, it's that hard to to gauge when I moved on about how good we became after that, though, because I wasn't I, I wasn't a part of it. Mm. Um, were the players a year and two years after that, or three years after that, better? I, I, I don't know if they were, they were a better team. I think that I think that the quality of player after that was getting better all the time. Yeah, you know, you're, you're talking then bringing in, you know, your, your Kevin McAllister. Kevin came in just before I left, but you know, we're, we're talking about the year later or two years later. Yeah, um, and you, you, uh, Richie Cadet, Brian Rice, and you know, so you're mm. you're talking Ian McCall. You're talking about proper quality players. Yeah, where they a better side. You know, it's up to the fans to decide that. For you, you, you two guys to decide that as, as punters. You know whether whether they were. I just know that I know we excited that yeah. the, the fans with that team in nineteen eighty one. You know, and we stay in Rod, we stay in Rod in that that lineup. You know, that, that, and the, the influence he had over all of us, mm. and the influence he was allowed to have over us by the management team. Um, I, I, but you know, I think it would be hard to beat as as a team. Yeah, where the players individually be a year and two years and three years later, very possibly. Um, but we were we were a unit. Yeah, um, and we stuck together. Yeah, you mentioned Simon Stainrod there, Sam, and people will forget this. But in that season, you actually finished above Simon in terms of goals. You had eighteen oh, to his sixteen. Miles, people forget Miles. that. Oh God, you know, he, he, no way he was doing that without me. That, that that wasn't the hard. He, he wasn't <laughs> as good as that. With no, getting on. He's um, he was he was involved in plenty of my goals that season as well. I know three of mine's on the Scottish Cup, and he does remind me of that. They had more <laughs> league goals that season than I did. Um, I keep in touch with the big man regularly. Um, through these texts back and forward and things like that. But you know, but he, he he's credited with that season for me, and and quite rightly so. Um, that wouldn't have happened for me if he hadn't been there. Would Simon have been as good for us if I wasn't there? That's debatable as well. You know, yeah. because somebody's going to have to do the work that he wasn't going to do. <laughs> and I, and I, I, I was well up for that. You know, I'm, I'm okay with that. If you're, if, you're, can, if you're getting paired up with somebody who was on the bench for England, mm-hmm. the Maracana, then you know, I'll, if, if I need to do a wee bit of donkey work for somebody like that, then that, that's yeah. the kind of attitude I had. That was okay with me. He he, he had an awful lot of love for you, Sammy. You've you've we've heard that over the years. More recently, when it was the the night at the Enshira, um yep. last year as well. Which let's face it, we knew Simon was going to love that night because well, he slated me as well. To be fair, at times, right he, enough, but he did. But he had a lot of love for you. He had an awful it, lot of love for you. You know what? The the very fact that. He made me his assistant manager when we were at Air United together. He made me captain first and then assistant manager. 
Um, it wouldn't. It, Simon wouldn't do something like that if, yeah. they, if he thought you were going to let him let him down or anything. You know, he, he wouldn't do do it out of sentiment or anything. You know, that's that's no type of guy no. is. You know, because. He's not going to. He's not going to want to lose his job because he's put some idiot and you know to, to work <laughs> on the side of him. Um, but no, you know what? We we complimented each other, and I'm I'm chuffed to hell with the way he speaks about me. You know, ever since then, um, the things he says. So I I'll, I'll take that for somebody who has standing in the game. Go on. We need to, we need to mention the hat trick against the Airdrie Sammy. Come on, I know you love to talk about that. What, was that with Falkirk? <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember that right. Okay, right. So, yeah, what one of the strangest days of my life, John, to be fair. Um, you know, I've said it, I've said it before, and I don't know if you guys have heard it, but it was, it was, it was a day that I felt as though for some reason I was possessed. Um, I, I, I kind of, I bring myself down a wee bit about certain aspects of my game when I, when I played, but you know. I've got to know the guys I played with fairly well and about what they were going to do in a game and where they were going to put the ball and things like that. I think I was quite good at reading, you know, the game probably more than I was about controlling a football and things like that. But, you know, when Deeks and Simon and Tom McQueen and guys like that are um, getting into a, a good position, I tended to know where, you know, where they were going to, yeah. going to put it. Um, and certainly, I think, more, more so. I'll just go off the, the track with the the, 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 the day at Airdrie a wee bit. The night we played Air United um, at at Brockville, the, the live sky, the first live, oh, the, the four PSG, two one, the four two game, yeah. four one, four one oh, four game. One. Yeah, yeah. You know how I, I don't know how I knew that night as well that Simon was going to hit the ball outside his right foot when he crossed it in for my diving header, but yeah. I did know. And and I'm thinking he's going to show off here. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it was like that, and it's the same way that the, the, my, my second goal at, at, at Broomfield that day with Deeks, I just knew that there was no way he was going to chip it or he was going to fire it in low near post for the diving header one. And and, and similarly, Tommy McQueen's one, and, and what I meant by possessed, when Tommy McQueen's cross came over, I thought it was far, far too high for me. And and I set off my jump against Bill. Jim Smith and how I got a bomb, I don't know. And the distance I travelled forward to actually header it, I, I don't know how that happens. Um, but probably one of the best days of my life. Yep, absolutely. Um, you, and even better. And he, even better that Stainrod didn't score that day. But <laughs> <even better>. um, <laughs> but I, you know, you know, it, it was it was a, a day that was required as well. But we don't win that day. We don't win the league that year. You know, the week before when we drew two each at Dundee when it was quite foggy up there. I don't know if any of you guys were at that game. But we were excellent that day and that yeah. was what kick-started that. Um, kick-started the run we went on over and above the fact that uh, Alec Taylor and Tommy were brought in. I, I, was, I agree. I agree, I agree with you, Sam. It was a, we needed to because Airdrie were top of the league. I, uh, by a good margin, yeah. Yeah, we, and I, I totally agree with you. I think we had to, and you talk about you being possessed, it, like you, you were talking about the team there being like almost telepathic at points. Mm -hmm. That's how. It, that's why I think it's, for me, still the best 11 or 14 that we've had because everybody knew how everybody was going to play and it just yeah. clicked every single, not every yeah. week at the beginning, but towards from two, like a third of the way in to the yeah. end, it was just perfect. It was perfect. But, but there was a few decisions made as well, Ross, on, on route to between the time you're talking and the end of the season that, again, because Airdrie were so good that season, because Dundee were so good that season, there was a few things happened as well. Great manager, Chip, great decisions for the management team. Eddie May yeah. coming in. Big Peter, Godfrey coming in, stop gap yeah. at centre-back. If these things don't happen, I don't. I don't. I think it was that tight at the time that I, I don't know if we would have on to win it. And, and you know what? It'd have been one of the worst things ever if if that team didn't win the league that season. Yeah. But his yeah. decision to bring in Eddie Mate that timing of that was was incredible. And as I say, Big Peter coming in for the last maybe what eight or nine games. Yeah. Um. What a difference! It just it steadied everything at the back. Because uh, I think there was a couple of injuries. Because I think we only used about 16 or 17 players that, that season. That's mad, yeah. isn't it? In the modern oh, game, when you think about well, it, that's well, absolutely mental. Well, when you think that they can use 16 or 17 any Saturday now. Aye. You know what I mean? So, it was... Um, 
it was it was mad. It, re- it really was. And as I say, the the day Airdrie and and for me after the game to to get me a few of the Airdrie players after it was a bit surreal as well. Because Sammy Cohen was one of my best pals. God rest him. Um, and I would with the with him and some of the Airdrie boys after the game. Um, and and it was great. It was it was really was. But it was it was a it was a day, and it, and it, and it kind of that it kind of started the, the, a good run that we went on, and, and you just felt you, you just could feel the fan base all coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, did, you the the did you take the ball? Did you take the match ball away on the night out? The match, the match ball was actually given to charity. Mm. Um, for Big Gordy, I think, wasn't it? Sorry, was that eventually you went to the Big Gordy's fund, didn't it? The ball. Um, I think I, I think the, the money I, I did do that's exactly yeah. what it went. It was uh, Tommy Logan that bought it. Yeah. Um, and I got it put in a case for for Tommy. Um, so then like him to pay that kind of money for a stupid football. To be fair, <laughs> um, I've kept in touch with Tommy because he'd done that as well. I got a, a few games of golf with him. Um, so it's really nice that, that it went to you know a fan because I Tom I, I believe it or not that that the day of that game at Airdrie. I think it was the first day that Tommy's dad had took him to a game. Oh, brilliant. And he was there that day. Oh, I wow. saw brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. What was it like making then, once you won the, the, the league, um, Sammy, what was it like making a step up into the Premier League then? Um, oh God, I, I, I knew I was under pressure straight away, John. Um, probably doubted myself a wee bit um, about whether I could make the step up and... Um, I'm starting to feel the the, the the back getting sore again a wee bit um, and suffered for a few injuries. Played a lot of games without scoring and then Crunchy came. Uh, we Kevin came and, and Simon moved on and um, Richie Cadet came in as well. And I think I scored four goals in the last five games or something at the end of the season in the Premier League and started feel, feeling really, really good about it again. Mm. Um, but I had a I had a bit of a rubbish season to be perfectly honest, and and actually I was playing in the middle of the park for a while. I was playing in midfield for, and I was playing in midfield the day that Simon scored the the goal against uh, St Johnson at McDermott to the halfway. Park. Yeah, I, and I I had a few games in the middle of the park, and, and I think that I was put in there for my work rate kind of thing. You know what I mean? And I'd always put myself about, and mm. but um, I was it was a kind of sore season for me, um, having coming off what we did, but. Do you know what? See, see if I'd scored a couple of goals early doors, I think it could have been a good win. Yeah, I really do. But it didn't happen, um, and there's not, nothing you can do about it. That just happens in football. I was just lucky that I did have the, the, the season before, um, but I was delighted with the way that the, the season ended because we we stayed up in the Premier with uh, with five games to go. We beat Motherwell one 0 at Fir Park. I scored yeah. that day, which was great as well, and and we, we stayed up. Um, so I kind of felt at the end of the season because I had four goals in five games that contributed a wee bit. Yeah. Um, but no, it was a bit of a sore, a bit of a sore season. So it was. Because you at, at the so that, so that first sort of full season back in the Prem, Sam. Um, you they, we then would have had the summer period, and then it was you were still at the club for another sort of six months after that. Had there been any conversations with Jim in terms of your your <sighs> future, or was it all just a bit um, carry on as we are? <laughs> to be fair, Ross, um, I was I was probably playing the reserves. I was still training with the, with the first team all the time, things like that. But yeah. you know, when when you're kind of left out of things, it's it's, it's no no a great feeling. Never any animosity. To be fair, and I, I never went <laughs> banging on the manager's door. I was still playing really well in the reserves, yeah. things like that. But um, I think I realised, and I think the manager realised, it maybe time to move on. Um, yeah. And George Burley came in for me at Air United. Uh, I went down there and, and and had a decent wee period doing it doing it here as well. You know, but, but, but it's a bit strange when, when you when you think about eighteen goals in, in the in the league to, to to get us to help us get promotion, um, and a right good side. Yeah. And the season after I went down here, um, at fifteen goals, and and a team that. You know, weren't you quite as good as the Falkirk team? And to have 18 goals in that, the, the championship, mm. uh, 15 goals in the championship where United was 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 decent. Yeah. You know, no, it really was. But, but Falkirk were flying that year. That was the year I, Falkirk went up. They were flying. I was, I, I was away to say, because obviously that, that did coincide, because I, I remember 
um, going down to Somerset, season 93, 94. Right. And you would have been, uh, you would have been where, obviously, yeah. playing, playing up against, uh, what was it, Neil Duffy would have been at the back. Absolutely, all oh, the, bo- yeah. Joe all the boys. All the boys. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Uh, I just realised how strong they were, Ross. It was Aye. weird seeing you in an airstrip. <laughs> well, well, you know, I've got broke that. Ross's heart, Sammy. It broke Ross's heart. He went crying <laughs> away that those nights. I, I seen, I seen a picture the other day uh, when I was captain at air, and we were playing Falker. Um, I think it was a Brockwell actually. And Yogi was a captain for Falker. I'm the captain for air. The wee ball boy standing, the referee standing. And I'm like, there's something to write about that picture. It was me standing in the airstrip, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but I no, you know, I enjoyed my time d- down there as well. Um, and every time I came back to to, to Falkirk, or the Falkirk fans were doing it here, I'm, I'm still well received, yeah. which is nice. I mean, Sammy, you've recently, with all your achievements that you had at Falkirk, you're recently... You've got your face emblazoned on the stand now. The part of one of the six legends that that are on that stand now. How how does that make you feel when you turn up at the stadium and you go, Ah, there you are. I'm up there. Unbelievable. Um, and and you know it's funny because when when I was contacted by, by the club to say that it, it, it was happening, um, I didn't really know what what their intentions were or how it was going to going to be up in the stand and, and you know, and, and you think to yourself, you know, that you're going to have to be sponsored to be up there as well, you know, and the company's going to have to come in. And and I've actually spent a wee bit of time with, with the company that I've, I've sponsored my bit in, in the North Stand. And that was really nice as well. My, me and my wife spent time with, with, with the folk for, for the company um, that are sponsoring us. And it was, was absolutely brilliant. Um, so I... Really chuffed, you know. When I, when I think about who has played with the club and things like that, um, I, I, it's weird to to think that I, I'm still as well received, or even more received, better received now with, with the club than probably was when I played with them. And it, and it's it's really really strange, um, but nice. That is really nice, and to be in that stand with you know Tiger McLaughlin and Russell Latape and Simon Stay, no, Andy Nicol. Um, it's and it's just it's frightening. Um, and and to meet the 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 the, the legends that are, are put up yeah. for that, it's just it's, it's great. It really is. It's really nice. That was a, that was a brilliant picture. Um, back at the start, was it back at the start of this season, wasn't it? When um, the Dundee United game, I think it was, and there was yourself, Tiger, and Yogi was yeah. there. It was brilliant. Yeah. Oh, you have no idea how many fake email addresses Ross set up to make that happen as well, Sammy. <laughs> see, see, be fair, guys. I hadn't had not spent much time with, with, with Tiger, with, with John McLaughlin uh, prior to that, and to, to sit that night um, with, it, with some of the, the companies that sponsored uh, the stand um, and sit with him and, and his wife, which was fantastic. Um, you didn't again, mention Alex Ferguson. Don't, 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 whatever you do, don't mention Alex Ferguson to Tiger McLaughlin, Sammy. We found well, we that out in the portal now. Do not mention Alex right, Ferguson. Okay. But, but, you know, that's the first thing I'll say to him when I see him the next time. <laughs> now. Definitely. But him and his wife were, were, were brilliant, honestly. And it was great to see Andy Nicol. Um, I'm, I'm not saying Andy was an underrated player because, um, you know, when you think about... You're still looking at games just now and you know looking for blame in games when somebody makes a big mistake especially how much the game has changed and we're playing out for the back and yeah. you know the goalkeeper is so involved and your centre backs are so involved I don't remember Andy Nicol making a mistake in a game that cost us a game I don't yeah. ever remember no, he was that stalwart, wasn't he? Absolutely. proper stalwart he was Do you know what I mean and and I know what we're, we're, we're back three or we're back five have been fantastic this season they really have there's been a couple of wee mistakes in there, which is going to happen because of the way we're, the, the, we're being asked to play. Um, yeah. But Andy Nicholl was never one of the ones that made the mistake. Uh, if that ball had to get planted no elsewhere, way, no then way. it did. And, you, you know, you think back to, you know, your big Crawford and, well, Yogi did get the ball down a wee bit and trying to play, to be fair. But most of the guys I've played with, you know, when they're playing at the back, they, they, know, they know what their position is, they know where their place is in the team. Um, well, to be fair, Big Manly thought he was a bit of a player as well, to be fair. Uh, he liked to pass it about. Um, but, you know, by and large, you know, you, you, your defenders should defend. And that's what Andy Nicol done. And he was fantastic at it. 
It was. Right, right. Well, so we've got some quick fire questions for you now, Sam, if you don't mind indulging us. Um, just about your time at the club, that'd be great. What's the funniest shout you've ever heard from the crowd when you've you've been playing? Have you, you anything stand out? The funniest shout. To, to be fair, probably one of the, one of the funniest ones w- w- was when I was actually at Kilmarnock and I was overtaking corners for Kelly against Falkirk at the time. And some of these shouts were absolutely unbelievable, but they were in, a, they were in kind of in a nice way. And that, that probably one of the things that endeared me to the, the Falkirk fans at the time. It was probably mostly about my mop of hair or something like that. But um, <laughs> no, you. By the way, there, there, there was I think there was there was one that went for a long time as well. Somebody in the stand that kept shouting chicken legs to me and things like that. You know what I mean? I mean my big muscly legs and everything. But um, I, I don't, you know, other than getting severe stick off a away opposition, I've never had any real crazy ones with Falk at fans. To be fair, I've always been all right with that. They, they thought my body was in decent proportion. I think <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> Um, best dressing room story, Sammy. Best dressing room story. Well, everybody would like you to believe that it's about something about um, Yogi and, and Simon boxing all the time. Yeah. You know what? The two of them weren't that interesting. They'd be standing <laughs> knocking hell at each other in that dressing room. None of the rest of us gave a, gave a monkeys about it. You know, <laughs> they, 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 were, they were seeking attention. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the two of them. And they were knocking lumps at you. They're knocking hell at each other. And the rest of us weren't given a damn for what they were up to. They, they thought they were that important that we'd all be sitting clapping and, and, and enjoying it. They didn't care. They didn't be bored about them. But it was real. I mean, they, they, they were hitting each other. Um, I wouldn't have fancied my chances against Yogi. Simon must have fancied them. Oh, no, Simon, no, Simon was solid, John. Simon oh, was really? Simon. Oh, I, he was solid. Aye, aye. Oh, he, he, he was in the gym a lot. Um, he, he became quite pally with... Um, a boy doing it doing it here United who ran a, a gymnasium. Um and he uh no Stainrod spent a lot of time in the gym. Um and no, to be fair, Yogi was, was, was pretty solid as well. But you know, but I, I, I toss you a coin between the two of them. Oh really? Wow. Ah, yeah. Aye. Aye. Um, yeah, I mean I, I, I don't think I need to ask you who the best manager you were working on, but assuming the answer is Jim Jeffries after you, you spoke to, about him. Um, what what was the who was the worst manager to work under? Oh, God. Do you know what? Every manager I've, I've probably played under um, has been pretty good to me, John. Yeah. You know, and and, and the worst, worst manager in my time at Falker, <laughs> this would be something the Falker fans will, will probably agree with, but no, because I didn't like him. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't because of that, but David Clark's ideas in the game, you know, the the, the they weren't what Falkirk wanted or needed at that time. They were very defensive, very negative. Yeah. Um, but David was good, good to me. Um, and whenever I was available fit to play, he would play me. But uh, he, he was he was very. He's, he's, I mean, he, he used to play when he when he played himself. He played twenty five years twenty five yards behind his centre half as a sweeper. Wow. Um, and that's the way he kind of had he set up. You know, everything was about not losing goals, no losing games. Mm. Um, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't pretty. It wasn't no. pretty. To be fair, at the end of that season, we, you know, we stayed up against um, Celtic um, at right. Parkhead, which was, was good. Jim, Jimmy Gilmore. Uh, Jimmy Gilmore's twenty-five yard thunderbolt into the top corner. I but you scored, scored you scored first, though, didn't you? I scored after forty seconds. Yeah, yeah. After, people yeah, forget that as well, top. Sam. Yeah, get that in. Um, <laughs> we flick on for Big Crawford. So um, that was that was the day that David Hay got sacked that night. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. I mean, Celtic weren't going to win the league anyway, but I think mathematically they could still have, but Rangers won the league that day. Yeah. Um, and David Hay actually got sacked that night, I think. Um, we had two games left. Ab- Aberdeen away and Celtic away, and we had to win one of them to have any chance of staying up. We were like, oh, God, we're down. <laughs> gone. Um, and what a night out that was, surely. You know what? We, we, we'd, we'd done well that day. You know, mm. I, I know there wasn't a massive crowd, there wasn't a massive pressure. Well, there was massive pressure on because if we didn't get a result out of the two games, we were down. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when, when you compare their 11 against their 11 that day, and who, I mean, their, their, their front three were 
Alan McAnally, Brian McLear, and Mo Johnson. Yeah, we beat them. And, and, exactly. and apparently the people said that me and Kennedy were better than the three of them. So <laughs> uh, take that as well. Exactly. Take that as well. Um, and their goal that day should, shouldn't have been a goal either. They got a penalty. It was never a penalty. You know, and Shock. so Shock, fantastic, you know, <laughs> um, But aye, that, 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 that was, that was a, a, big, a big deal that day as well. And probably in the history of the club as aye. well. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. that, that, was, that was great. So, but you said obviously Sammy uh, Simon's up there as sort of one of the best you've played with. Who, who's who's the best player you've ever played against? Do you think? Um, played against directly against as uh-huh. a striker playing against a centre half was two yeah, or, or any yeah or any position really just well uh, well well yeah. I think the the best player I've been in the park way uh, is Paul McStay. Right. Yeah. Um, Even at the level the you played at uh, with him, um, Sammy, when you were played, come up through the youth system with him, could you tell yeah. even then he was an absolute player? Yeah, oh, oh unbelievable. Um, and, and you know what? He, he was as good at seventeen or eighteen as he was when he was thirty. Yeah, twenty five or twenty six. He, he, he was he was just outstanding. And at, you know, at a time when you know some people think it, it's, it's it's no um, it's no an outstanding player that, that, that just holds possession all the time. But he was the first one that I ever seen that, you know, that any time he was under pressure in the park, he, he would still find his pass. He would still mm. retain possession. Um and I know I know some players are, are quite capable of doing it, but he done it in a way it was classy. Um and and probably it should maybe and he's it's clear been a wee bit more forward thinking and maybe maybe scored a few more goals and things like that. I know what people yeah. said that. But it was outstanding. Um, but the two most difficult uh, centre backs I've come up against was uh, Paul Elliott for Celtic and yeah. and Terry Butcher for Rangers, oh, because sure. the two of them had everything that I, I, I had nothing on them. You know, my pace. They, they, the two of them were lightning fast. Yeah. Um, and brilliant in the air. I mean, I was decent in the air for my size. Yeah. Um, and would fancy my chances against. Most to get you know get a few headers in the game or whatever, but um, Butcher and, and Elliot. I mean, I'm sure I'm probably went through some games against the two without even getting a kick in the ball. Um, they, they, they were that good yeah. uh, and good Rangers and Celtic sides to be fair as well. Yeah, they That's were. Right, yeah. um, but they they were difficult. Yeah, and what was the the best goal you scored, Sammy? Um, pro- probably. Probably one of my best goals was um, the week after the hat trick um, against Wraith Rovers when we beat them seven one. Um, the team that that day were outstanding, and I had an absolute holocaust. I believed all my height for the, the hat trick and the, the papers and the interviews and all the rest of it. And I went into that game against Wraith Rovers that day, and I felt as though my legs didn't belong to me, and I was having an absolute Look shocker. Um, and I, I, I don't know, about 10, 15 minutes into the second half, I'm like, I'm going to get 10 off here. And the ball dropped him about 25 yards outside the box, and I had a left foot half ball into the top corner. <laughs> and I'm thinking, <laughs> it was just meant to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, and it got, it got me a big, big hole because I could just imagine getting that dress room after that game, and Jeff is giving it, you, you big, he did we forever. Um, <laughs> and I flew into the top corner. Um, but my, my very, very last goal in professional football um, for Dumbarton, prior to me having a fallout with him or the chairman at the time, um, I, I was I must have been 34, 35 years old at the time. My very last game in senior football. And again, it was a, a half wall with my left foot at the top corner against Brecon at the old Boghead Park, uh, which was, was a nice one as well. Wow. Um, but team goal, team goal, definitely my third against surgery. Yeah. Um the header, the, the, the move was, was outstanding. Um and for as good as Airdre were um at that time and on the day, because they were decent on that day when we beat them. Um the the move for that game was frightening. For Big Crawford um starting it to, to me finishing it. It was, it was you know we see I've seen some really good goals for Falkirk this season. Um and, and I hope some of them are remembered, you know, yeah. the way the, 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 the were back in the day um, because um, there's been some outstanding goals this season but 
that one stands out. Um, and, you know, when you've got it on sports scene and you've got it for folk to see, it, it just makes it that wee bit better, I suppose. Yeah. You still got the still got the VHS then, Sammy? I still got it. I think that I the VHS is still set up for me to watch whenever I feel <laughs> down about anything. <laughs> a folk don't, don't have a good result. So I'd watch it. <laughs> Sammy, you, you touched on uh, just before we've got one last question for you. But just before we do that, one of uh, uh, you mentioned earlier, my favourite super Sammy McGovern goal is that Air United games where, as you mentioned, with Simon uh, curling yep, yep. the cross in, and then the diving header, and then. I, I don't know if you were running towards him or Hope Street, but I was standing in line with where you right? were running with my dad. Right. You wouldn't have been running to me, but it felt like you were. So that's probably where the uh, <laughs> kicked in as well. <laughs> I think the most surprising thing about that goal that night, Ross, to be fair, was uh, Stainrod actually used his pace to run by somebody before he, <laughs> he got the cross he? in. He um, I think that person who ran by should have retired that night, to be perfectly honest. The steam rods running by you, and you as well chucking it. Um, <laughs> but aye, it was, um, it, the, the, the timing it was, was good, and the Simon had scored very early on in the game. Um, and, you know, it was written in the stars for us to win comfortably that night, to be perfectly honest, as it was in the Saturday in the Meadow Bank game. Um, it, it, was, it was going to happen. You know, yeah, I, I don't even, I don't know if, if right now, I think right now we're, we're thinking we're going to uh, Falkirk Stadium and, and we're expecting the team to win most of the time. But at that time, it wasn't the expectation or hope that we knew we were going to win these games. Yeah. Um, and that's a strange feeling going into a, a game. It's a great feeling mm. going into a game where you, you know you're not going to lose it and you're actually going to win it. Yeah. Um, and that, that was the kind of feeling that night against there. But uh, that, that, that was a nice goal. That, again, as I said earlier on, you know, uh, I knew where Simon was putting up. I knew he was going to show off. And the reason I probably didn't go and celebrate with him was he didn't away celebrate himself for his cross with the, the side of his <laughs> <laughs> And just finally, Sammy, what was your favourite for uh, brought for memory? Um, probably after winning the league that night, even though I didn't play against Meadowbank, um, we were treated like kings after the game. You know, there was no no expense spared and I know it's not about money and things like that but sometimes it's just nice to be made feel special and that night the club made us feel really really special we we, we celebrated with we, all oh, the, 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 the players for the reserve team and, and the YTS you know the, 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 the young apprentices and things like that we have kept in touch with a few of them o- over the years as well and for them to um, be involved that night as well after the game at um, and obviously it was David Holmes that was there at the time as well which made, made us feel like a, a bigger club than what we, are, we were probably um, but it, it, it was a, a, that was a great that was my, my, my probably my, my best brought home memory was that night after that game just how um, how I mean we were a proper team for the, the full season and, and it kind of showed in the way we, we celebrated after it I think um, so you know that, that I know that's no one that, that the fans get to be involved in and, and things like that, but that was um, it was dead special to us. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, listen, it, it's been an absolute delight to speak to you, Sammy uh, Ross. Is this is like me with with Tam Lang? He's just a quivering wreck there, beating to chat <laughs> to. You. Um, but it, it's been an absolute delight, and we're glad you've, we've got you on Falkirk Daft after you missed out in the Fortress Prop all night. Um, and hopefully get you but I think there's probably a lot more stories to tell and a lot more to so we'll need to get you back on at some point and we'll love, do you know what it'd be great to get you on to have, have, get your perspective next time you're at a Falkirk game and come on and you can give us your perspective on one of the games that'd be brilliant absolutely that'd be good Paul yeah I look forward to that and it's been a delight speak to the two of you honestly great fantastic well, listen Dyke that's been a very special edition of Falkirk Dad uh, with the ginger god himself not Ross Mr. Sam McGivern, it's Falkirk Daft meets Sam McGivern. Thank you very much for listening or watching, and we'll see you on the next one.